Grace, mercy, power, and peace are yours this morning and every morning through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That is easier said than done. You've likely heard that phrase before. You've probably even used it from time to time. It's easier said than done. It points out the fact that there's a huge difference between knowing what should happen and doing what needs to happen. Easier said than done is a reminder that talk is cheap and that it's much more difficult to take action than it is to simply talk action. Easier said than done applies to many situations in life. You run into it all the time. Like when you're in the middle of a heated argument and someone says, you need to calm down. It's good advice, but easier said than done. People are talking about you behind your back, and a friend says, hey, you shouldn't worry what others think about you. Again, great advice, but it's easier to say it than it is to do it. Forgive and forget. Just tell the truth. Don't worry. Just ask her out. All easier said than done. Trying to keep your mouth shut when you're angry. Losing weight, choosing a college or a career, it's one thing to say it, it's a whole other thing to actually make it happen. And there's a reason for that. It's because things that are easier said than done, well, it's in the phrase. They tend to be hard. They can be difficult or challenging. They, they can be nerve-wracking or frightening. They can even be downright impossible. Today, the Lord has a message for us. A message that makes us say, that's easier said than done. Because today the Lord says, go. Go and tell people about Jesus. It's a pretty common command in scripture, it's nothing new. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Go and tell people about Jesus. A simple enough command. But when you realize that God is saying that to you, to me, your heart starts to race, your, your palms maybe get a little sweaty because it's one thing to talk about telling someone about Jesus. It's a whole other thing to open your mouth and actually tell them. What if they think I'm dumb? What if they don't listen? What if it makes things awkward between us? Go. It's a simple command, but it's one that we often balk at. And we're not alone in that. People throughout history have hesitated when they heard that command to go. They've hesitated to take the leap and actually tell someone about Jesus. In fact, the Bible itself is filled with many examples of people who heard God's command to go and tell, and they thought twice about it. Do you remember the story of the prophet Jonah? He's most famous for that incident with the great big fish, but that only happened because when God said, Jonah, go and preach to the city of Nineveh, Jonah went just in the opposite direction. When Jesus first sent out his 12 disciples to go preach and teach without him, he sent them out with marching orders like these. Don't take any supplies, don't take any provisions, not even any money, and by the way, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. You think they might have been less than eager to go after hearing that? The famous passage that Pastor Hirsch read in the children's message from Isaiah 6, when the Lord asked, whom shall I send and who will go for us? He had to ask those questions because no one was going. So it's not just us. It's not just you and me who hesitate when God says, go. And, and while that might make us feel a little better, it doesn't change the fact that we know we should go. And more often than not, we don't. And I think I know why. I think I know why we hesitate when God says, go. It's because telling people about Jesus, that can be scary. 
And, and I say this from a little bit of experience. Uh, I, I grew up in an outreach-minded congregation. I've gone on several traveling mission trips. I, I spent a year as a leader in a mission congregation where three nights a week I was knocking on people's doors, telling them about their Savior. You'd think I'd be somewhat comfortable telling people about Jesus. But I've got to tell you, there's nothing like that feeling you get when you go up to someone's front door and you knock, and the only reason you're there is to tell them about their Savior. It's the biggest rush of adrenaline you could ever ask for, but it comes with a healthy dose of shaky knees and sudden onset cotton mouth. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to open the door. What are they going to be like? Will they listen? What is going to happen? You could encounter a very large, very angry man who clearly has a shotgun next to the door in case an unwanted visitor, such as you, comes a knocking. You could be cussed out by a grandma who uses language that would make a sailor blush. You could meet a very nice teenage boy who invites you in, only to hear his mother screaming from upstairs that that blankety-blank guy from that blankety-blank church better not be in her house. You could ring the doorbell and hear what sounds like either a very large dog or a small bear trying to tear the door down so it can have you for dinner. And maybe you think I'm just trying to be funny or I'm exaggerating or making this up. I'm not. These are all real people or real situations that I've encountered in my short years of telling people about Jesus. And to be honest, those people were kind of scary. They were mean and terrifying, and I wondered, you want me to go tell them about Jesus? You want me to share the gospel with them? That's what I'm supposed to do, God? Yes. Yes, that is what we're supposed to do. Because God says, go. No restrictions. No limits. No exceptions. Go and tell them about Jesus. Even when you don't want to. Even when you're scared or nervous. Even when you don't feel like it. That's what the Lord said to Ananias in our first lesson from today. If you want to follow along, I'll be reading Acts chapter 9, starting at verse 11. The Lord told Ananias, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street, and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. You understand why Ananias was hesitant, don't you? God was telling him to go see one of the most dangerous men for a believer to encounter. This persecutor named Saul, who just one chapter earlier in Acts 8 that the Bible tells us was destroying the church, going from house to house, dragging off men and women and throwing them in prison. This man was public enemy number one for the Christian church. And Ananias wasn't just going to catch a glimpse of Saul from a distance. He wasn't just going to talk to him from a safe location. No, Ananias was going to meet him. He was going to come face to face with Saul, and he was going to help him, to heal him. He was going to place his hands on Saul and restore his sight, making it statistically more likely that Saul would see him and attack him or throw him in prison. Of course, Ananias is scared. This man is a notorious, murderous persecutor. This man is an avowed enemy of God. Of course, Ananias doesn't want to go. But what does the Lord say to him? Go. Go and tell Saul about Jesus. 
even though you're scared and nervous and really don't want to. Go tell Saul about Jesus, because he needs to hear about his Savior. Go tell Saul about Jesus, because Jesus died even for Saul. Go tell Saul about Jesus, because he is important to God. Go. It's what God says to each of us today. Go and tell others about Jesus, even though you don't want to, even if you're nervous or scared or don't feel like it. Go tell people about Jesus, because God loves each and every person, even if they hate him. Go tell others about Jesus, because Christ died for them. Go tell others about Jesus, because that's what God wants. He wants you to share the message of Christ. He wants you to play a role in bringing someone to faith. He wants you to bring the message of a living Savior to those who are dead in sin. And he wants you to know that you're not going alone. There's a reason I can talk lightheartedly about some of the more interesting people I've encountered while pounding the pavement for Jesus. It's because I know it wasn't just me facing down the angry giant or the foul-mouthed grandma. It wasn't just me. I had the Lord of hosts with me. I had an army of angels behind me and the Lord Almighty speaking through me. I was, as Acts 9 puts it, a chosen instrument. And that's what you are, too. A chosen instrument. A person hand-picked by God to share the message of Jesus. You are someone's connection to Jesus. You will be the one who brings light to those living in darkness. You will be the one to tell that unbelieving friend or relative or family member about the Savior who loves them, who lived for them, who died for them, who rose for them. You are God's chosen instrument. So go. Go and leave your fears at the door. Because God knows all the worries, all the concerns that we have as we we gear up to tell someone about Jesus. What if it makes things weird? What if it strains our relationship? I'm not confident enough. I, I wouldn't know what to say. I would just mess it up. I'm too messed up. Now, are are those legitimate concerns? Absolutely. But look at the Apostle Paul. The the same man from Acts 9, known as the persecutor Saul. After this encounter with Ananias, God graciously planted faith in his heart. And Saul, he changed his name and became a completely different person. He went from notorious persecutor to one of the most prolific missionaries of all time. And he shared those exact same concerns that you have. Was the Apostle Paul going to ruffle some feathers and strain some relationships by telling people about their Savior? Absolutely. Especially because most of the people he was trying to share Jesus with were the same folks he had once worked with to destroy the church. You bet there's going to be some friction and some headbutting there. Was the Apostle Paul always confident? Did he always know what to say? Not always. In fact, when Paul describes how he preached, how he shared the message of Jesus, in 1 Corinthians he says, I came to you with weakness and fear and much trembling. Hardly the words of someone who's confident. Was Paul too messed up for Jesus? I mean, the guy was pretty far gone. He he was an avowed enemy of the church, trying with all his might to destroy everything related to Christ. But was he too messed up for Jesus? No. After this encounter with Ananias, Saul became Paul. He traveled throughout the known world, 
telling the message of Jesus to people everywhere he went. He told thousands uh, upon thousands of people about the Savior. He helped start over a dozen churches. He affected God's kingdom in a huge, unquantifiable way. It didn't all happen at once. It didn't all happen overnight. It happened over a lifetime of telling people about Jesus. It happened because one person, one scared man named Ananias, heard God's command to go, and he went. One chosen instrument named Ananias shared the message of Jesus with another chosen instrument named Saul, and the word of the Lord spread like wildfire. Imagine what would happen if dozens or hundreds of people heard that command to go and tell, and off they went. You don't have to imagine, because it's already happening. I represent a school that exists for one purpose, to train and encourage our high school students to hear that command to go, and then to go. Luther Preparatory School, for over 150 years, has been training the next generation of pastors and teachers. We train our students to understand more fully and to appreciate more deeply the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we encourage them to consider becoming full-time gospel proclaimers as pastors or teachers. And you can help us with this task. If you have children approaching high school age, keep Luther Prep as an option. Because when your child is there, for four years, they will be immersed in God's word, surrounded by fellow Christians and encouraged by dozens of pastors and teachers with an incredible amount of zeal and passion for the Lord's work. If you are a student who loves your Lord, keep Luther Prep in mind as you draw near to those high school years. When you're there, your faith will grow, and God willing, so will your desire to go and tell. But the best way you can help us out is to remember Luther Prep in your prayers. So please, pray for our faculty, that they continue to do their work well and faithfully. And, and pray for our students, that more and more of them would hear that command to go, and be willing to go and tell people about their Savior. But above all, remember to listen to your Lord. Because the Lord's command to go and tell others about Jesus is not just for students at Luther Prep. It's not just for your pastors and teachers here at St. Paul's. That command is for every single one of us. There is someone in your life who needs to hear about Jesus. You know them. And you know that you are God's chosen instrument. So go. And tell them. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.